السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ما ما بعد. الحمد لله رب العالمين. I'm very pleased to be in this beautiful gathering. May Allah subhanahu wa taala bless you and bless your community. Ya Allah. One thing that is very important this gathering is that we get to get to know each other. Insha Allah taala. And when we leave, we've already actually embraced that sense of brotherhood and sisterhood, inshallah wa ta'ala. So let me give you 30 seconds. I want you please to shake hands with those who are next to you and get to know them by name. Bismillah, go ahead, 30 seconds for that. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, we heard earlier from Brother Bufti Kamali the meaning of da'wah. It's a process. Being active and being an activist, it's a process. And it's a great honor even to be on this path. But something so many forget, so many people forget about in the process of making themselves, alhamdulillah, available for the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal, and being always there, giving da'wah and talking to others, being available online and offline all this time, in sharing Islam and serving humanity, sometimes we forget about ourselves. As we work so hard to deliver Islam to the people, to the world, as we work so hard, trying our, as, as much as we can to guide people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Somehow with this great effort that we're making, the intention somehow got dropped somewhere. We don't know what happened. And in that process, a lot of people, they get burned out. They become dropout on the path of down. So how can I find and how can I keep that light within as I'm trying to shed lights on others? How can I keep that light within? This is what I would like to share with you, inshallah, to understand that as I'm trying to help other people, I need to make sure that I'm still also well guarded and well protected. You see, even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us. Allah azza wa reminding us about the importance of taking care of ourselves. Ya ayyuhaladina amanu, alaykum anfusakum, la durukum mandalla idah tadaytum. All you who believe, you care for yourself. And that means basically, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks in the context of when people, they choose to go astray, you make sure as long as you do your part, you take care of yourself. It is very important for those brothers and sisters that we alhamdulillah becoming very active these days, as they try to, to, to become more and more engaged, that they never forget about themselves. I've been doing alhamdulillah this work in, in terms of public speaking and teaching young men and women uh, around the country for the past almost 18, 20 years. But I have seen a lot. I've seen a lot of young men and women who become very active in high school, mashallah, and then become very active at MSA, and then become very active with a lot of youth groups, mashallah, for a certain time. But then somehow, they're missing. You go to the masajid, certain age group is always missing from the community. A lot of brothers and sisters, they just kind of like take, take a year or 10 years off completely. What happened to them? Why aren't they there anymore? Where is that light that was supposedly from within that was guiding them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah has made it very clear to us that Allah is Nuru Samawati wal Ard. He is subhanahu wa ta'ala, the light of the heavens and the earth. So if you want to have that light, you're going to go and seek that light from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu taqu Allah wa aminu bi rasoolih. O you who believe, fear Allah wa aminu bi rasoolih. Now look what does that mean here. O oh, you who believe, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O oh, you who believe. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala acknowledging and emphasizing that they're already believers. He says, Attaqullah, means be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then said, Aminu bi rasulihi, which means believe in his messenger. What does that mean? I mean, he already said that they are believers, but he called them, O oh, you who believe. Why is he calling them right now to believe in the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? In some of the tafasir, the ulama, they say this ayah I was speaking about putting the, this faith into action, which means follow his example. What do you get out of this? What am I going to get if I'm going to become an activist in the, in the da'wah? In my field, what do I get out of this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He will give you which means two loads of reward. You're going to get a lot of reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then, which is very important over here, and he will give you light that you will walk with. So not just believe in Allah Azza wa Jal, it is also believe in the message of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and put that into action. Only then you will get that reward for what you're doing and you will be provided with light. That light is that which comes from within. This is the light that will make a lot of people walk through. We live in time where people are very confused. 
This is the time, the, the greatest fitna, I gave a khutbah a few, a few weeks ago actually on the subject, is one of the greatest fit and the, great, the greatest trials and ordeals people are going through today is confusion. When it comes to the young ones specifically, they come out very confused about what, what is it exactly the right path? I'm a Muslim, I want to stay Muslim, but which, which way should I go? Which one would lead me to that which is considered the best? And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you want that light, you go back to the, to the point of reference to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the message, to the message of sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah Azza wa says, Whoever, whoever doesn't receive light from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one will be able to give them light. Which means if you're really feeling that confusion, instead of going on the internet and Googling this and going here and there, go back to Allah Azza wa Jal. You will get that light. That light from within is what we're all looking for. I've been, alhamdulillah, in the middle of da'wah since I was very young. And I've seen a lot of my friends, a lot of my peers become dropouts. Why? Because they lost that light. And many of them, they will be engaged in so much khayr, so much khayr in da'wah, but they work so hard helping and assisting others that they forgot about themselves, and as a result, they feel burned out and they lost that light. So the subhanAllah, they just left that path. Some of them, alhamdulillah, came back again, but still, it's very dangerous. Because when we try to see the light somewhere else, away from Allah Azza wa Jal, it's going to be very, very hard, extremely hard. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "فَمَا يُرِدِ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَشْرَحَ يَهْدِ أَنْ يُهْدِيَهُ يَشْرَحَ صَدْرَهُ الْإِسْلَامِ." If Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wants for somebody to be guided, He will make it easy for them in their heart to receive that and to receive Islam, which is the light of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So how can I get that? That is the question people they ask. Okay, fine. I know I need that that light from Allah Azza wa Jal. How can I achieve this? Now here's one thing, before I get actually the few points I want to share with you inshallah Azza wa When it comes to finding that light from Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, people don't, don't understand that this is an individual experience. It is an individual experience. And I mean by that, we all feel exhausted, we all feel tired, we all feel subhanAllah that we need some assistance to find that light, which is true, we all need help from other people. So we come to these conventions, we come to these programs, and people, they go to Umrah, they go to Hajj. So when they see the crowd and they see the size of the people, they feel like, wow, this is awesome. They feel rejuvenated. But then when the convention is over and the program is done, Ramadan is over as well, we go back to normal life, what happens to us? Oh man, that light is just kind of turning off again. And we start saying, I wish Ramadan can be every single day. Why? Because we need that torch to always be lit and coming in front of us. But when it comes to this experience, it's an individual experience. What does that mean? Where are we getting that from? You see in Surah Al-Sharh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he was speaking about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as he was giving the da'wah, what did he say? قَالَ فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ Speaking to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Arabic language, the pronoun that was used over here, it's an individual, singular pronoun, speaking to the Prophet ﷺ directly, he says, فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ When you're done, done doing what? Well, we all know that he's doing وسلم, giving da'wah to the people. When you are done, فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ When you're done guiding people, preaching, going out there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ The word فَانْصَبْ means put yourself to the fatigue, which means get yourself tired again. Doing what? The individual act of worship. Al-ibadah, salah, the night prayer. Wa ila rabbika farghab. And to your Lord, come closer to yourself nearer to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. These pronouns don't have anything, anything actually in terms of group. It's not plural. They're all singular. Allah said to the Prophet you ida faragta. When you're done, then you come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do more. But this time do it for yourself. A lot of us, those who get involved in da'wah, we do so hard, we do so much for the people and to others, alhamdulillah. And I'm sure that a lot of brothers and sisters in this convention right now, a lot of volunteers, by the time that the convention is over, they will be exhausted and tired. A lot of people came here from different places. Why? Because they're looking for that light within this beautiful gathering, which is amazing and it's true. But you have to look for that from within. And it can happen only if you have that individual experience between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
heavily depending on the group and the people, it's good, that's nice. But don't forget about yourself. You need to have that individual experience with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what can I do individually in order to keep that light from within, inshallah, Azza wa Number one, the first thing, always be conscious of Allah Azza wa Jal, at taqwa, taqwa Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Why so? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa taqullah wa yu'allibukumullah. If you have that conscience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you fear Allah Azza wa Jal, truly Allah will give you the knowledge. Allah will teach you. Teach you what? What you need to do. He will give you guidance. That's what it means. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhu aladheena amanu in tattaqullah, yaj'al lakum furqana. Oh, you who believe, if you truly become conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you have taqwa of Allah azza wa ta'ala, if you have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will give you furqana, and furqan like criteria. Meaning, He will give you that insight by which you can tell right from wrong. How many people today, you see them, Muslims, they're committing the haram. Why is that? Because they cannot see the haram in it. They can't see the haram in it. No matter how much you try to tell them, they cannot see what you see. Why? Because unfortunately they lack that. That light from within is not there. And it's not showing them what they need to see. So they need to get that. How do we do this? The first thing, like I said again, having that full consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the taqwa of Allah azza wa jalla. Ramadan is coming very soon, inshallah tabaraka wa ta'ala. May Allah make among those who witness Ramadan, ya Rabbil Alameen. And I give you the full reward for fasting the month of Ramadan, ya Allah. It is the month of taqwa. Fasting is the month of taqwa. Make sure to take your time, inshallah, there in Ramadan to increase that taqwa. But until then, what do I do next? How can I get that light? How can I get that taqwa? Al-Quran. The Quran, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which Allah azza wa says about it, qala wa kathalika uhayna ilayka ruhan min amrina. Allah said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, thus we have revealed to you ruh, ruh which means spirit, from amin amrina, from the command from the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the, by the command and order of Allah azza wa jal. But ruh for what? A spirit for what? The ulama, they say, Al-Quran is the spirit of your soul. Just like the soul is the, actually the spirit of your body. Just like your body needs that soul in order to survive, your soul needs that for the Quran to survive as well. And you need to always to engage in the book of, with the, with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has called the Quran again many, many occasions in, in the Quran as being light. Qajjaakum min Allahi nur. There comes to you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nur, light. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it very clear. Wa kitabun mubin. And it's a very clear book. Yahdi bihillah. Allah guides through this book to many, many, many people to Allah azza wa jal. So the Quran is the second thing you, take, you think about constantly. And make sometimes, throughout the day and the night, share some of your time with the Quran, with the book of Allah azza wa jal. So a taqwa, conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then have that relationship with the book of Allah azza wa jal. Number three. What do I need? You know, in the process of living this life again, we have a lot of, a lot of things to, to worry about. We have our personal life, family life, school, work, many, many things. So we do everything we can. And then what is left for us in order for us to continue on this path? We put our trust in Allah Azza wa You are not responsible for the result. Like Mufti Kawani mentioned, we're not responsible for the result. We're responsible for doing our part, that's all. As long as you do your part, then you need to let everything in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah azza wa jal says, وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ Whoever puts his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will supply them. Means he will take care of you. He will guide you through it subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then comes after that number four, patience. You need to be patient. Why? Allah says, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ Means seek that assistance and that aid in two things. In being patient, persevering in patience. And number two, as salah Pray regularly. Patience is a quality that is concerned in this time in particular, the quality that, that's completely lost and missing in our time. It's missing. And Allah has just praised, us, praised patience and persevering in patience as one of the greatest qualities for those who like to survive in this world. Surah Al-Asr, wa tawasaw bil haqq wa tawasaw bil sabr. Those who have faith, have the faith and have the practice of that faith, and then what? They enjoy good among themselves. And they persevere in patience as well. So patience is important. Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu, the messenger of Allah said to him, وَمَا أُوتِيَ أَحَدٌ عَطَاءً أَوْسَعَ وَلَا أَنْفَعَ مِنَ الصَّبْرِ That Allah subhanahu has never given anybody ata, which means a gift, better than patience. So patience is crucial, it's extremely, extremely important. 
we live in, in the age of instant gratification and obviously, you know, everything we need to do, drive through things. Everything is drive through these days. When I go on a shopping, sometimes you go into these grocery stores and you see how people completely are becoming impatient. They don't even like to stand in line, even if they were two in front of you. That's it. So they keep going from cashier one to cashier ten, looking for the shortest line. By the time they go to number 10, they realize number two was shorter. They go back to number two. Right? By the time you get to number two, somehow number seven was short. Let's go back to number seven. They waste more time trying to figure out the shortest line when they were just a little bit patient, they could have done by then they would be actually already actually in the car. People don't have even patience to go shop, you know, because it takes so much time, so they do it online. We live in this culture that patience is, is a completely lost virtue. And in order for things to, to, to be perfect, you need to be patient with it. So number four, patience is what we need in order to find that light from within. And number five, and the last point, inshallah, wa ta'ala, is as salah. Was ta'inu bis sabri was salah. You persevere in patience and also maintain your salah and your regular prayers. Allah Azza wa Jal, the Prophet, as a matter of fact, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, was salah to noor, in the hadith of Muslim, he said, was salah to noor. Salah, in essence, is light. It's that light from within. But what is salah? Salah is your personal communication and connection with Allah Azza wa Jal. It's the most personal experience with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it happens five times a day at least. And when we don't maintain that regularly, then we're not going to be able to get that light shining. We might be maintaining the five daily prayers, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. But a lot of us in the process, we lose the quality. You see in Surah Al-Mu'minun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Successful are the believers. Those when they pray, they pray with khushu', which means focus and concentration. What does that mean exactly? It's very ironic, isn't it, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying successful are the believers. He didn't say those who pray. He didn't say those who pray. It was already implied that they pray when he said successful are the believers. But he said those when they pray, they focus. What does that mean? As an imam, a lot of people come to me and say, Chef, I've been praying for the past 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, whatever. I don't feel it. Why are all these things happening to me? I don't know. What, I'm not getting that the sweetness of, of, of salah that you're talking about. I said, what is the quality of your salah? What's the quality of your worship? If it's not that great, then it's almost like useless. In meaning that doesn't connect. So what does that exactly mean? al khushur is not the communication. al khushur is actually the connection. So the I in translation means successful that are the believers, those when they pray, they connect with Allah Azza wa You might be communicating. Like John Maxwell, one of the leaders in, in, in leadership, he says actually in his book, everybody communicates, but few people connect. Which is true. Everybody communicates. Even in your silence, you're communicating. When you're upset, when you're happy, you're communicating. When you just do nothing, just being there, that's part of the communication process probably. But how much of that communication is connecting? You might be worshipping, you might be praying, you might be giving charity, but are you connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That connection is missing. How can I do this? My advice. The last two things, inshallah, wa ta'ala, is the advice here is that how can I make that connection sound and strong? Two things. Focus on two things. Number one. Number one. Always make sure that you have a daily word, a daily communication with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Quran. Which means you read the Quran. Why so? Because the Quran is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking to you. So the Quran. And by the way, I'm bringing big, big, big this because a survey that was actually uh, uh, released earlier, subhanAllah, last year, saying that those who've been surveyed among the Muslims who lost connection with, the, with their deen and their Islam, it's because of two things. Number one, because they don't have a daily, daily routine or daily assignment with the Quran. They don't read the Quran on a daily basis. They don't, even if it was one page. So they need to have a daily assignment with the Quran. That's number one. Number two, that you need to work on, inshallah, to have that connection so that the light starts becoming on. Having something such as ibadah to sir, which means secret ibadah, secret act of worship. What's the meaning of the secret act of worship? You know, a lot of people, 
when they commit sins, what do they do? They try everything in their power to hide it so that no one would know anything about it. You see how much we try to hide our sins? This is how much we try to do good and hide our goodness. Think of something that you do. Whether it's form of dhikr that you do, recitation of the Quran, and particularly the night prayer. Or maybe you're very charitable. You give charity regularly without anyone knows about it. Maybe you're helping your neighbors. You're feeding the homeless. Do something that no one should know about it. You don't have to post that on your Instagram or even on Snapchat or that stuff and so on. Don't do that stuff. Keep it secret. Having a regular thing, a regular assignment with the Quran on daily basis. And number two, think of something that you do to keep it between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will teach you to remain sincere and always remain sincere. May Allah make you among those of the Rabbil Alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.